subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. What we're seeing play out today with the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine is a unique, very public and a real-time look at how health researchers and scientists ensure the safety of vaccines. This process is particularly important to observe in light of rising anti-vaccine pseudoscientific sentiments, I would say in pockets but globally. And that is what we'll be talking about in this video, the process of establishing trust in vaccines and the lessons we can learn from the adverse events that have occurred in the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine trial. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. So what is happening with AstraZeneca and the Oxford vaccine? This vaccine showed a lot of promise. We've discussed the vaccine before on this show and I have myself called it personally the most promising vaccine candidate. It is the Chad Ox1 vaccine which will be manufactured by the Serum Institute of India in India as well. It is already in phase 3 trials in multiple countries which is US, Britain, South Africa, Brazil as well as India and it has involved almost 20,000 people now with the objective of involving 30,000 people in these vaccine trials. These are phase 2, phase 3 vaccine trials in multiple places. The AstraZeneca Oxford trial is a well-designed, well-conducted trial. In fact, there were even talks of human challenge trials, if you remember, where people could purposely get exposed to the virus after vaccination to test the efficacy of the vaccination. Those trials haven't commenced yet, but the existing trials are facing a deeply troubling problem. A few days ago, AstraZeneca paused their vaccine trials, which began in April in Britain, when a patient among the 8,000 or so participants in Britain developed a serious neurological illness. It was later revealed that this is a condition called transverse myelitis or an inflammation of the spinal cord. This patient was a woman and she developed this condition after receiving one dose of the vaccine in July. Now, why is this such a serious issue? Because transverse myelitis is a neurological condition affecting the brain and the spinal cord. Myelitis is inflammation of the spinal cord and transverse means that it runs horizontally along the spinal cord. Transverse myelitis interrupts the normal flow of signals from the brain to the spinal cord, resulting in decreased electrical conductivity in the nervous system. Transverse myelitis can cause weakness or pain in your limbs, arms and legs. It can result in loss of sensation in extremities. It can cause numbness. It can affect motor skills and it could even lead to paralysis. It can even cause issues with urethra and anal sphincter use, so using the toilet, and can also result in high blood pressure. We still do not know what causes transverse myelitis, but it's known to occur with various kinds of infections, especially ones that affect the immune system. If a vaccine induces such a result, even in one patient among the 20,000 or so enrolled right now, the vaccine is not considered to be safe by scientists and health experts. Imagine you can take a vaccine that could prevent this lung disease, maybe, but there is a teeny tiny chance that you might get paralyzed. Would you take it? I wouldn't. It's not safe. No individual should be left with this and especially because the numbers add up in large-scale vaccination drives. Especially if there's an underlying unidentified trigger or cause which could run into God knows how many cases when the vaccine is rolled out to the public. So when the case first came to light, these trials were immediately paused globally with a day or two's lag here and there. A safety review was conducted by an independent board of experts and apparently it was determined that the participant previously had a case of multiple sclerosis that was undiagnosed and unrelated to the vaccine. Multiple sclerosis is a condition where the fatty outer layers of our nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord are damaged. And transverse myelitis can often be a symptom of multiple sclerosis. So the safety experts concluded that it was safe to resume the trials and they did so. Then the trials were suddenly paused again this month in a matter of just about a month due to a second undisclosed illness. 
This illness too was a neurological illness and anonymous sources have spoken to journalists and this is also believed to be a case of transverse myelitis. There has been no official confirmation so far. In an official participant information sheet, which shall be linked in the description below, which is for the vaccine trial volunteers, the Oxford Vaccine Group actually has clubbed the two adverse incidents together, saying that reactions in the nervous system are extreme and rare, but can induce something called the Guillain-Barré syndrome. The Guillain-Barré syndrome is an autoimmune condition in which the immune system attacks nerve cells, which can then also lead to subsequently weakness, numbness, tingling, and then eventually paralysis. The Oxford Vaccine Group say that such serious adverse events have not been observed previously from using this Chad Ox1 chimp adenovirus as a vector. Adenoviruses are generally considered to be safe in vaccines and are quite commonly used. The participant sheet further says that independent reviews found that either these two illnesses are unlikely to be associated with the vaccine or that there just wasn't enough evidence to conclusively determine if it was caused because of the vaccine or not. Neither is a perfect explanation, but we're looking for a degree of safety here and the independent reviews have asserted that it is safe for the trials to resume. So the trials have resumed in Britain, although the US doesn't feel comfortable resuming the trials and they have not in the US yet. AstraZeneca has not confirmed if the second illness was also transverse myelitis. Maybe they are unable to conclusively tell, but it still seems to be a neurological reaction that interferes with the nervous system, brain and spinal cord. And the company is now also under fire for not informing the public on their own about why they stopped the trials in the first place and informing only the investors. This was leaked and reported by STAT. A link will be in the description box below again. Now, transverse myelitis is extremely rare, but if it has occurred in two people already, it is no longer extremely rare when it comes to vaccine safety. It's a pattern instead, as experts are saying. And if even one more case of transverse myelitis is reported, this vaccine is going out the window. It will never hit the market and it should not. In that case, one of the leading vaccine candidates is eliminated for us. Now, trials have resumed everywhere except the US. We don't know what is going to happen next, but we wait in dread to see if there might be a third case. But still, there are some lessons to be learned here from these past two cases. The first is that the larger the study group, the better the chances of spotting adverse events. Transverse myelitis is a very rare neurological condition and the fact that it was detected in these trials is unfortunately for the participants is bad news but for the vaccine and for the rest of the world is good news. There is a potential safety issue that was identified before the vaccine hit the market and that is important. Secondly, it is important to have a diverse group of participants in vaccine trials in terms of age, sex, ethnicity, geography, comorbidities and many other parameters. This is a condition that is dependent on unknown factors and we also do not know whether these factors depend on age or sex or specific underlying conditions or whether they are more frequent in people from a geographical location. We don't know any of those things. So the more diverse the group, the better the ability for us to spot safety issues in these vaccines. Third, the detection of such an adverse event makes vaccines in general not less safe, but in fact more safe. What we're seeing now is how scientists and researchers work to ensure that a vaccine is safe and doesn't cause harmful side effects. By harmful side effects, I mean serious conditions or even just those that require treatment beyond over-the-counter paracetamol. Vaccines are made to be especially safe and when they are not, they are not administered. We've learned a lot from our vaccine development history and mistakes and the process now is transparent enough, especially with social media, 
for us all to see and observe mistakes being made, corrections being done, problems being encountered and experiments being designed. We have the data we need to determine the safety of vaccines. Unsafe vaccines are not given and there have been zero vaccines in zero individuals that have caused autism. Lastly, this is why vaccine trials cannot and should not be expedited. Vaccine trials take time. They have to take time and they will take time for us to say definitively that they are safe. Vaccines are safe, but they should not be pushed unless there are results from well-designed, well-conducted trials.